In the previous video, we decided to use Gaussian mixture model to fit our uh, data set and to solve the clustering problem. But how? How can we, uh, how can we do better than the uh, general stochastic gradient descent? So in this video, we will discuss some intuition that leads, uh, leads to expectation maximization algorithm for this particular case. Okay, to recall that the density of each data point in our Gaussian mixture model is a weighted sum of three, or in general, as many as you want, Gaussian distributions. And uh, uh, to start with, we will need to introduce a latent variable here, because it will make the reasoning about our model much easier. So, what can we call a latent variable here? Well, we can do something like this. We can say that each data point was generated uh, by using some information from a latent variable t, which exists, uh, like we have one ver latent variable t for each data point x, and it causes x, so it explains something about x. And the reasonable, the reasonable thing to uh, assume about t here is that it takes three values, uh, one, two, or three, and it shows us from which Gaussian this particular data point came from. So we actually don't know, uh, for, for any data point, we don't know from which Gaussian came from. So it's a latent variable, right? We, uh, no, we doesn't observe this uh, never, nor in training, nor in testing. But this can be helpful. So if we know the latent variables, it can be helpful to uh, understand something about our model. And later, then we fit uh, the Gaussian mixture model into our data we may find the distribution on the latent variable given the data. So we may find, uh, we may ask our model the question, how do you think? What is the value for uh, the latent variable t for this particular data point? And the answer to this question will be basically the clustering, right? From, it will uh, give us the beliefs like from which Gaussian this data point came from. So if we decided to use this kind of latent variable model, then it, it is reasonable to assume that the latent variable t has prior distribution pi. So it's exactly the weights of uh, our Gaussians. And uh, the latent variable t equals to some cluster number, for example, 1, with probability pi 1. And the likelihood, the density of the data point x, given that we know from which, data, uh, from which Gaussian it came from, is just Gaussian distribution because it came from the Gaussian. So uh, each data point, if we know that it came from the Gaussian number C, it's uh, density just uh, this Gaussian density with the parameters of the Gaussian number C. Okay, when we introduce this kind of latent variable model, we may now look at what will P of x given theta uh, represent in this model. So we, we change our model and we now have to check that it still gives you the same the same general results as the original, as our original model. If we write down p of x given theta given parameters in this latent variable model, we'll get this. It's just a sum of, uh, it's just a rule of sum for probabilities, and it says that p of x given theta equals to sum with respect to t. So we, mar we are marginalizing out t. We are summing with respect to all possible values for t from one to three. And we're assigning the joint distribution p of x and t, which equals to the likelihood times the prior. And if you substitute the definition of the prior and likelihood into this summation, you can understand that this last formula on this slide is exactly equal to the first formula. So we introduced some latent variable in such a way with, that we, uh, when we marginalize out this variable, we get exactly what we had before. Which means that we now can use this latent variable model, train it with the observed data x, x and uh, it will give us exactly the same results as uh, we would get if uh, we used the original model. So let's, let's now try to build some intuition about how to train this latent variable model. So say we have a data set, and now uh, say it's one dimensional. So each data point from one to n is just one number for simplicity of illustration. Uh, so how could our goal of uh, finding the maximum likelihood estimation is finding the parameters, right? How can we find the parameters? 
Well, it turns out that if we know the sources, if we know the values of the latent variables for each data point, then finding the parameters mu and sigma is easy. Because, you know, you can say that all the blue data points here uh, is the data points for which we know that uh, they came from the first Gaussian. And we can look at them separately from the, all the orange data points and just fit them into one Gaussian, which we already know how to do, because it's just uh, fitting some data set of blue points into a Gaussian distribution. And you can look, uh, you can see the formulas on the bottom of the slide, but uh, it's something we have already done in, the, in week one. Which means that if we know the sources, if we know the values of the latent variables, it's easy to estimate the parameters theta. And actually, if we, uh, if we don't have these hard assignments, but rather have soft assignments, so some posterior distribution on T, which means that for each data point, we don't assume that it uh, belongs to just one cluster, but rather we, we assume that it belongs to all clusters simultaneously, all Gaussians simultaneously, but with some different probabilities uh, being uh, the posterior P of T given X and parameters. If we have these probabilities, it is also easy to estimate the parameters. So instead of just summing with respect to all blue points and averaging uh, their position to get the location of the, of the blue Gaussian, we'll have to sum all the points but with weights. So if the posterior P of T equals to 1 uh, is 1 for some data point, it means that this uh, particular data point is completely blue. It, uh, it certainly belongs to the blue Gaussian and will, uh, uh, it will be used as just, you know, as blue data point in the averaging with uh, weight 1. If for some data point P of t equal 1 is 0, it means that this data point is certainly orange and we will just don't use it uh, in the computing the blue Gaussian uh, mean at all. But if the data point is like, for example, P of t equals 1 is 0.8, it just means that this data point is kind of not certain. It may be, it, it, most, it, it thinks that it belongs to the blue Gaussian, but it's not sure. And so it will highly affect the position of the blue Gaussian and a little bit affect the position of the orange Gaussian. So we will derive these kind of formulas later more uh, from more uh, strict considerations. But now just believe me that uh, if you know the posterior probability on T, you can easily estimate the parameters this way. Okay, but uh, the bottom line here is that if we know the sources, no matter soft assignments or hard assignments, then we can easily estimate the parameters of our Gaussian mixture model. But on practice, we don't, right? We don't know the sources. So how can we estimate the sources? Uh, well, it turns out that if we know the parameters, so the Gaussians, their locations and their variances, then we can easily estimate the sources because uh, we can use just the Bayes rule to do it. And by the Bayes rule, the soft assignment, the posterior probability of T equals to, for example, blue Gaussian, uh, for some particular data point is just, is just proportional to uh, the joint probability, which is likelihood times prior. And if we know the parameters, theta, we can easily compute this likelihood and prior at any given point. So we can easily compute this uh, posterior probability, which is basically uh, sources, which is basically assignments for each data point for two clusters, soft assignments. You may think that the normalization constant here can be problematic, but it turns out that we have just two values here, so two probabilities. The distribution P of T uh, given some data and theta it can take just two possible values. So we can explicitly normalize this thing by summing with respect to two unnormalized probabilities. It's no big deal. Okay, to summarize, we have kind of a chicken and egg problem. If we know the Gaussian parameters, we can easily estimate the sources. If we know the sources, we can easily estimate the Gaussian parameters. So what can we do in this case? Well, the expectation maximization algorithm in this particular case suggests us to do a very natural thing. So let's first of all initialize the parameters somehow randomly. And then in iterations in the loop, let's can, uh, repeat two steps until convergence. So first of all, let's fix the parameters, uh, assume that they're the true ones, and estimate the sources. 
And on the next step step, let's use the sources to re-estimate the parameters, to update our beliefs about the parameters. And uh, this way, after <coughs> repeating these two steps for uh, long enough, we will hopefully uh, um, obtain a reasonable solution to our, our uh, probability distribution fitting problem. So we will be able to fit Gaussian mixture model into our data.